In addition to the six main dplyr verbs, there's a number of other dplyr functions that are really useful for data processing. Now the data wrangling cheat sheet gives you a summary of these. Let's go over some of the most common. Rename is a way that you can rename columns. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory from the name. So let's start with the Star Wars data set. So that's built into the tidyverse. And let's say we don't like this hair underscore color um, or skin underscore color kind of table name. We want to prepare this table for publication. So let's rename those columns. Now rename takes the argument name is the new column name. So let's say hair color and that equals the old column name. So hair underscore color spelled the American way. Okay. If your um, column names are proper our variable names. So they're only letters, numbers, and underscores and full stops, and they don't start with a number. Then you don't have to put them inside quotation marks or back ticks. You can, nothing bad will happen. So put them in back ticks or inside quotation marks. Um, but if they do have things like spaces, then you have to put them inside of back ticks or quotation marks. Okay, so this is a way that you can rename your columns. You just separate all of the columns that you want to rename um, with commas. So we can make name with an uppercase N instead of lowercase N. And it doesn't matter what order you rename them in. Now, almost everybody gets confused at some point and does this backwards. So sets name equals uppercase name. Um, so the new column name on the right side of the equal sign, you'll get an error that says can't rename columns that don't exist. Column name doesn't exist. Um, so that error should just tell you, oops, you put them in the wrong order. It's really easy to do. And then you swap them around. Distinct is a function that lets you get rid of duplicates. Let's say you um, ran a participant on an experiment that you created on a computer in the lab, and then you decide you want to run them on two different computers um, for future experiments. You copied the whole folder over to another computer. Um, now you want to merge together those two data files, but you have the data from the same subject in both of the data files. How do you find the rows that are identical and get rid of them? Distinct lets you do that in one step. So if you have um, a data frame that's got some duplicates, let's just create a quick data frame with the tibble function. Um, so let's set the IDs are one, two, one, two, one, two. And DB is one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so here we've got this first row and this row are identical. These two rows are identical. If you run the distinct function on that data set, you have to spell it right. It'll get rid of the duplicate rows. They have to be duplicates for every single column. Make sure that you really want to do this before you run this and that you're not getting rid of data that are identical but actually represent two different observations. Uh, the next function that's useful is count. It does the exact same thing as the combination of group by and summarize. So let's take the um, Star Wars data set again and let's group by sex and then we want to see how many individuals are there of each sex in the Star Wars universe. So we can summarize, make a new column called n, set that equal to the n function, which is just the count, how many rows there are, and drop the groups. OK. So all that the count function does is just a really quick um, shortcut for that. So the first argument is the data set that you want to count. 
and the next is the um, the columns you want to group over when you're doing your count. It will just return the grouping columns and the n. So we also have gender here um, and have feminine and masculine coded asexual characters in the Star Wars universe. Okay, slice is the next function. Slice just gives us a slice of the data set. So slice Star Wars, if we want to take, say, the first three rows, we can put in one through three, and this gives us the first three rows. So it gives you slices of rows by number, and you can put commas and any number of, um, so you can add more numbers like this. Now, the filter argument gives you rows based on criteria, like all of the um, rows where species is droid. But slice gives you um, rows by position. The last function we're going to talk about here is pull. So pull gives you a vector that is the contents of a single column. So if we want to take, um, let's say, start with our Star Wars data set again. And we want to, let's filter just where species is droid. Okay, that gives us all of the rows where the species is droid. But what if we just want their names? We can select name and that gives us a table that only has one column which is name. If we use the pull function instead that gives us a vector of the values in that column. So there's a subtle distinction between selecting just one column what you get back is a table versus pulling where what you get back is a vector. The vector can have any number from zero to a very large number of entries. Um, so we sometimes might ask you to return a value and make sure that it's a vector, not a table. 